Hello there, everybody. We are back here with episode number two of the Quebec franchise, Be a Pro, and right now we are struggling, which is to be expected. I didn't think we were going to have a good first year, so... It is what it is. We did end up signing Shane Pinto. It cost us a second round pick, which I know people are probably going to be upset about. But what's done is done. I probably do have people calling for my job already as GM. But you know what? You got to trust the process. Am I right? I don't think there's going to be too much GMing in this video. This is going to be more of the be a pro part, even though we do suck this year. And I would like to play some of the other created teams so we kind of stand a chance because they're around our overall. And my plan for this one is to get up to the trade deadline and then I will be asking you guys what you think we should do. Should we try to trade some assets for picks? I don't really know that we have many assets, so that won't work. We could try to trade up like a third and a fourth in order to get a second. I know it's early on, but let me view this draft class again. I want to see if there's any studs that could be taken later on. Yeah, we don't really have too much of a report right now, but we do have... Okay, so Sam Dickinson, basically guaranteed to be medium elite. He's a defenseman. We've got Sebastian here, might be medium elite. Spike Devil is potentially medium elite as well. These ones, probably not, but let's go to the gem bus category. Do we have anything there yet? No, we do not. Hopefully our scouts will be busy in this video and then at the trade deadline, I can go view the draft class again and we'll have some updates. The next created team we play is the Utah Bears. So let's go ahead and simulate these three overtime loss. That was a close one there against the Sabres. And we beat the Edmonton Oilers. Nice. Razor Bowman takes over 22 points in 30 games. He is going to be a stud. But I just want to make sure that Rip Mandam is in fact in the cage. That's the wrong one. There we go. Yeah. All right. So... Let's play this game and see what happens. Times eight simulation speed and we take a penalty immediately. That is actually impressive time to take a penalty. I don't know how we managed that, but we did. And they score a goal. Unfortunate. We were being outshot 9-1. Now it's 11-5, 11-6. Okay, so we're kind of pulling it back. Let's go Shane Pinto. He has been... Very good for us, and he might have just taken it back from Razor Bowman. Or maybe Bowman got an apple, it's hard to say. They get another goal, it is 2-1 for the bad guys. And that might be the score going into the third. Yes, it will be. Push for offense, accept. Shorten the bench, accept. No, don't call a timeout, decline that, I don't want to do that. And I forgot to do position lock. Hold on. Eventually, I will get used to this. But obviously, I'm not used to doing it because I just play be a pro. Where you can only be the goalie. Well, if you do a goalie, be a pro. That is. Obviously. Early chance right there. I think that was Kai Beeston. Their prospect. He's hustling back too. Alright, here we go. Okay, get out muscled. Love that. Keep it in. Huge by Tugi. Down low, and that could have found its way. They don't have brick wall in, which is kind of weird. Nice try, but a big save by their goaltender. Tugi cross ice. A point shot. Metzola's all over it right now. Let's get a draw win here, Pinto. I, no, you know what? I was just kidding, actually. Yeah, that's fine. Here comes Mike Mailer. One of their creative prospects. Okay, he keeps it. I thought he was going to lose it, and I cheated to that shot so hard. Like, I... Had the whole left side of the net open. Maninen carrying it in now. I believe he was the one that scored their first goal. But it is headman to Razor Bowman who tries to make a pass. Finally succeeds. But Valtteri Filpula, the leading scorer right now of this Utah squad, is there defensively to break it up. Let's go, Tugi. Gains the line. Yeah, take him wide. Nice pass to Pool Party. Shaw. Look at the passing on the lads. Get there, 2 8. Love it. Percy now goes to walk in, keeps it in the zone, and no, he doesn't. What are we doing here, Percy? That's a great goal. I can't even be upset about that one, but what I can be upset about is this celebration. Get out of my crease. Oh, here he comes again. He is flying after scoring that first goal. I think I might get a stat there. Might be a save. Can't say for sure. What are we doing here, boys? Come on. Get some composure. Yager. Yager goes for it. I hope he has the salute in this game. That would be amazing. Come on, someone help him. That does not help him. Ooh, did that get tipped too? Not sure. But again, we have it. Thank you, Shane, by the way. Shout out, Shane. Tugi was battling. 
And Pinto said, I'm going to get over there and help this guy out. That's what we needed a second ago. And we weren't getting that. They love those passes. Okay, so I got to be ready for those. And... Wait, did he fall during his celebration? What was that all about? Yeah, I tried to cheat over because I thought he was going to pass it, but the pass didn't get through. And then sure enough, he had an entire net. Goes for the pass, it's blocked, and I was out to lunch. Unreal. Alright, so this game is not looking too promising. But it's the way she goes. I'm not that upset about it. We could just tank for the first overall pick, you know? That could be our whole strategy here. Couple saves. And we are also maybe heading to another penalty kill. Yep, we sure are. Yeah, just keep taking those penalties. Let's finish last in the league. Blocker save. And again, a battle along the boards. Nah, all over that one. Kind of thought he had a chance to pass it there, so I was a little bit worried. But thankfully, it didn't work out. This ain't going so well. I just recorded a be a pro and was on fire in that. And then I come here and just quickly get humbled. Should have hugged the post, I guess. But I feel like every time I do that, it doesn't work in my favor. Come on, quicker reaction time, Rit. It looks like their goalie does have that equipment, which is nice. I don't know why I had to re-edit our goalie. Yeah, their goalie just not letting anything through right now. He is on fire in this third period and we got buried. Someone get there. I guess I should start hugging the post. Normally I'm very... What is going on with my goalie right now? His pad is just hooked on the post and he can't seem to get loose. Alright, what is going on here, guys? Yeah, screw it. It's already a blowout. One final goal? Howitzer of a shot, but nope. Doesn't happen. And the Grizzlies get the better of us, unfortunately. Shane Pinto did take it back. He now has 23 points. Let's see who the next team is. I think it was the Thrashers. I didn't see any games before the deadline against Portland, I don't believe. There's another one against Utah. Where the heck is the Portland games? I guess we already played them twice at the start of the year and just done with them now. Lost to Dallas. A 7-5 win over Winnipeg. How do we pull that off? Hello? Three game winning streak and then we go down to the Golden Knights and get slapped by Seattle. But then another win taking on the Atlanta Thrashers here. They are back and they come out hot with three shots quick. But it's alright because we return the favor. Power play and we kill it off. Good job. That will do it for period number one. It is still 0-0. Shots are even. So far, this game has been just that. Very even. Just another battle of the basement. Oh, Razor Bowman scores on Clapperton. Sorry about your luck there, Dusty. And we will have a one goal lead heading into three. That's good news. Oh no! All right, I guess we're not playing this game then. So I'll make this quick save on Cole Tactics, get wrecked. And then we'll get out of here. Yeah, there's no point in me being here. All right, so there's a lot of things I got to get used to for this because, as I said, how do we end up losing 4-1? What a disgrace. Oh, I guess it was a back-to-back, -back, so that's probably why Rip Man Dam was not in. Let's see how we fare against Montreal here. I'm not even going to do times eight. Let's just go past the first two periods and see where we stand. Period one. Nice. Yager. Beauty. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, we could jump into this one. I don't know why it took me this long to realize this. It just clicked in, but this is the Battle of Quebec right now. All right, this is going to be a heated rivalry. These guys are going to be our number one team to beat. Here we go. Nice start. Razor Bowen behind the net. Oh, what a pass. Threads the needle, and a point shot won't get through. But Tugi over to Percy. To Haraluk, who lets one go. And Sam Montembeau. That's the same goalie we're taking on in Bia Pro. Oh, that's not good. Razor Bowman dropped like a two-foot putt, but took the hit to make a play because we are headed to the power play. Love to see that. Blakanich curls back. One of our assistant captains. We can't go anywhere. We're on the power play, and they have us pinned down. Oh! I was going to say, that better not be Yager because he does not get thrown around like that. I mean, it did happen 
one time that I can think of. I guess I'm gonna have to relearn how to play this game. That's a tripping call because we have to take the shots in a shootout, which I didn't expect to be a thing. Get in there, Razor. Look at him. He is an absolute bullet out there. Guy can fly. Brendan Gallagher bringing it in for Montreal. Goes for a shot. That's blocked. Bowman's gas too. He has nothing left in the tank. But still headbands it to Kempney, who scored the goal for us in the second, I believe. What a hit. Get leveled, new hook. Big save. Kick it aside. And now we are even strength and Placanish is gone. Hustle, young man. Hustle! Nice try. And yes, people are probably going to say something. I am quite aware that Thomas Placanich is not necessarily a young man. But we're just going to, you know, go with it. Whoa, a little glove. Save there in the bottom left and flash the leather while we're at it. Why not? Tie game still. Halfway through this third period and we have a pop fly. Hit the top of the net. Here's Montreal. Evans behind the net. Again, I am too scared to hug the post because historically has not been my friend. They just go cross ice, easy tap in goal. But that hasn't really happened recently, but I also haven't been hugging the post recently, so kind of hard to say. Come on, let's get one here. Let's try to prevent this thing. Rip Man Dam's first goal? No, I'm not going to do it. I won't do it unless it's like a blowout game or something. Shawzer cuts in the middle, gets it to pool party, and we almost got the go-ahead goal. Find a way. All right, we are very close to the two-minute warning here, and the score is 2-2 as well. That was a close call. Oh, my word. Okay, they are upping the pressure here. Can we answer? Or are we going to play scared? Nice pass. Oh, all right. I mean, and we just charged the goalie. I'm here for it. 25 seconds. And here comes Montreal. I think I saved it. I honestly have no idea what happened there. But I am confident that it didn't go in the net. So that's the most important thing. Shane Pinto. Looks like we are going to get the final attack here. Unless. Nope. Never mind. Shots are 35 to 34. Wow. This is a game and a half. Nice hit. Some trois on trois hockey here. That could be... I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. Savard is in. Gets it over, and that will do it. Goal Caulfield buries the Nordiques, and Montreal comes out on top in this Battle of Quebec. Don't mind us just tanking for that first overall pick. Somehow we got a 3-2 win over Seattle. We beat the Rangers, but the Jerks take us down, and now we're up against the Coyotes that are actually doing pretty good. So maybe this isn't a good game to try out. But I'm still going to do it anyway. First period is a 1-0 lead. Percy. All right. Let's go. 2-0. That's a pretty safe lead. I, apparently the worst lead in hockey. So they say. Some anyway. Not me. Oh my word. Why do I keep... Okay, I'm really going to have to get used to this. I finally remembered to position lock goalie and all that. I was hyped. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm getting this down pat. Nope. Big win though, 4-1. I'm gonna sim up to this next game against Arizona because why not? No trade requests, hmm, I wonder why. Once again, we lose to Montreal, that's heartbreaking, but don't worry, we'll get our revenge. Not this year, but we'll be good eventually and we are gonna take them down. Can we stop winning? Attempt number two, and I still did not check to see if we're in or not, so maybe we won't be. 1-1, one, one. it is man damn. Okay, so we're chilling. Second period, 3-2. Nice, let's go. We could even trade some of our future draft picks like two years down the road for some players at the deadline if they're available, but I don't know. That doesn't really seem like the best option right now. It could be worth it though, because if you get like a high top six player, that would have been nuts. But there are players that I feel like it's hard to get a draft pick Sorry, I, I, I totally lost my train of thought. I just got to get this sorted out first, and then we will return to what I was saying. All right. This is substantial pressure. All right, let me reestablish my train of thought here. So, what I'm saying is that, you know, if we trade away, like, a second and a third pick for a guy that's, like, 
I don't know, 87 overall, something like that. That could be a stretch. I'm not sure. I'd have to see the trade value. Depends how old they are, stuff like that. But, you know, can we get an 87 overall player with a second or third round pick? Maybe. But we could also guarantee it by making that trade. Just miss the net. And again, I could sound crazy. You know, some of you guys are probably like, what is this guy on about? I'm a total franchise noob. I do franchise modes very infrequently. I don't know what I'm doing. Why I wanted to start this series is a mystery to me. I guess it's just kind of the best of both worlds because for some reason people do like my franchise modes, which, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Glad that you are enjoying the content, but yeah, be a pro is definitely my thing. So we get to kind of do both this way. Nice razor. Good pass. Let's set up here. Toogie wires one. And whoever that was on defense firmed it. That's a huge shot block. Triple teaming Boyd right there. And it works out because Shane Pinto is now back in Yotes territory. I thought their goalie was going to be down for longer than that. He got up pretty quick. Nice little tip as well. All right. Both teams have had their chances here in this third for sure. Wonderful hit in the top of the screen there. Nope. No thank you. Too close for comfort. I'd appreciate if you did not do that ever again. So one lesson learned, and I'm happy I learned it already from the very start of this, is I'm going to have to overpay free agents, which is the unfortunate truth. But it is what it is. C'est la vie, actually, as we are Quebec. Ha! Huh, that was a weird shot. And Razor Bowman's going end-to-end. -end. No, he's not. He actually makes a very nice play to Howard Luke. Okay. Nice try. What a pass across, though. Yes, Shane. Yes. If he properly got to the backhand there, he would have had the whole net. That goalie's jockstrap would have been in the stands. But unfortunately, he couldn't get it. Get out of the zone. Nice. Empty net. Razor Bowman's gas, though. Just dumps it in. That's a safe play. I'm fine with that. Probably would have been better if you just put it towards the net because it would have had a chance. But I digress. Ten seconds remaining. And here come the Oats. Bjergstad loses it to Percy. That should do it. That should do it. Or not. Because Shane Pinto decided he wanted to hold it in our zone. There we go. Big dub. Let's go, Nordiques. I feel like we just have Arizona's number. That's two dubs. And how does uh, second star sound? Sounds pretty good to me. All right. So what I'm going to do is sim up to the day before the trade deadline. We are going to look at the draft class. We are going to look at players on the block. And I'm going to have you guys... Basically decide what we should do. Based on the players available, is there anyone that's worth sending out a second, a third, maybe even a future first four, depending on how good they are? Before we get to that, however, let's check out the standing. So we are last in the division. I kind of feel like we won't be last in the league. Tampa Bay currently first. But wow, New Jersey, four games at hand. Winnipeg in a wild card spot. 21st in the league. All right, let's scroll down a little bit more here. And we are currently 33rd. So we are first of the new teams. Actually, by quite a bit too, unfortunately. We're even keeping up with these guys. Like, almost tied with Chicago. They do have a game at hand. So does Smashville. But they're only two points ahead of us. San Jose's right there. Anaheim's within reach. The Blues. Bowman and Pinto both have 52 points. 26 goals for Shane, though. He's got an even split of 26. Shaw's got 40 points. 37 from Jace, who's been on fire. Pool Party's got 34. Ripman Dam has been getting lit up. 896 save percentage. 367 GAA. Not a fan of that. Please tell me that the scouts have been doing something. I need to see some updates here. Okay, that's huge. We have Nyquist, Medium Elite. We still have no idea what Sven is. I'm going to send a scout after him just in case. So I have to send a WHL scout to go after Iginla. And I will send an SHL scout to go after Sven. So unless Sven is a low-key franchise player, then it looks like no matter what, you're getting Medium Elite in the top six there. Jemmer Bus, there's still nothing in this category. SHL scout, let's go ahead and scout specific players. And yeah, you're definitely going after Josephson there. And I want the potential in comparison. How many do I get? Oh, I get a bunch. Do I really have to do this for all of them? But at least it stays on potential in comparison. So just 
Keep adding these guys. Yep. And those guys are going down. This guy's going up. Let's let's scout Svensson. Why not? And on top of that, we can scout Berglund. Oh, holy crap. You can assign 50 players. But does it sort of take away, you know, like if you add too many players, does that make the scouting less accurate or no? I don't know. I don't play franchise mode. You already know this. This Viking stat guy is a complete mystery. So potential in comparison there. And we got some more mysteries down here, but they're moving up. So the ones that are moving up in the rankings, I'm going to scout. Quinn Hughes? Goalie Quinn Hughes? Oh, it's Quinn C. Almost. Oh my, I backed out instead of accepting. There we go. Now I need to send the WHL scout. Yeah, you need some more people to scout, but this makes me believe that it is more accurate when you only assign them a specific set of players, like a smaller group. Why aren't you scouting this guy? All right, so I guess potential in comparison, that's the only thing I could think of. That's the most important, I believe. Lindstrom, Aginla. I guess maybe the other scouts going after these guys, but two opinions doesn't hurt. WHL, no, it doesn't look like it. I would also like your opinion on these players. So I'm going to add the first few here. And yeah, again, this could be an awful decision. This guy's scouting one person. That's insane. That's crazy. All right, well, I think that's the scouting handled. I showed you the draft class. We should be getting some more accurate scouting on this Sven guy, as well as Aginla, a few other players here. We've got like a medium top six here going in the second round, so that's nice. Too bad we don't have a second round pick. Oops. Couple of medium top six defenders. Yeah, that thing is correct. It does seem like a weak draft year, which is brutal because we got four teams that need prospects. Caden is a grinder. Uh, maybe, maybe a grinder. Medium elite for sure though. Supposed to go pretty high. Let's pin you. Um, what did I just do? A bunch of potential low elites. Yeah, we probably won't end up getting you, but just pin some players here in case. I think we should definitely be going after a forward because we do have Tugi already on defense. I feel like defense are kind of easier to come by in free agency or to make trades for, whereas a star forward might be a bit harder to get. And on top of that, Razor Bowman is a sniper. So getting a center playmaker or a left wing playmaker could be pretty huge. We've got Pinto locked in for three years at 215, which is a really good deal. And that will take him till he's 26. So just entering his prime. And last but not least, let's not not go to trading block. I want to browse the trading block and I will let you know if I find anything. Dumba, he's 29. I don't really think that would benefit our team right now too much. I'm more so looking for younger players, I feel like. Yeah, brutal. This would be huge if we didn't have Ritman Dam. Mackenzie Weger, he's 87, 30 years old though. Like, I don't know. I feel like we should be starting with younger players. That's a thing, but I want to hear your guys' opinion. There's this medium top six sniper left wing on Colorado and Richie as well. So they have some prospects on the block. Maybe we could target Colorado with some later draft picks. Some more players on Detroit that would be more so for a push now, which we're not really doing. A couple decent prospects here from the LA Kings. It would be crazy if we actually had like a somewhat decent record, like 500-ish. Could get so many players at this deadline, completely get rid of our future. Like all the draft picks would be gone, but we'd have a decent team. Ooh, this is a pretty good prospect. 19, top six potential. The trade value is actually kind of high though. Some more players for the push now, which no, Pittsburgh has some prospects. Yarventi, I feel like I remember him from a 2BC franchise mode. Tanner Jeannot, could grab him just to basically start fights and whatnot. Vancouver has some prospects on the block. Well, really just one that I would want to go after. And so do the Jets. So that's all the teams that have anybody really interesting on the block. And we saw the draft class coming up. So I am going to refrain from recording another one until I put this one out there and get your guys' feedback on what the Quebec Nordique should do. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate you as always. And I will see you soon.